Hey, everyone. Welcome to a special bonus Locked On Lakers for Saturday. Brian Kamenetsky, Andy Kamenetsky. No LeBron James versus Detroit on Friday. No problem as Anthony Davis puts up 38 and 16. Huge. That's next. You are Locked On Lakers. Your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks to everybody for making Locked On Lakers first listen of every day, including Andy Saturdays, depending on what happens on Friday. Um, the Lakers had a big game on Friday. Um, not against a great team, but a game that they had to have um, if they're going to kind of crawl their way back into uh, respectability. Uh, the the what, are, what they came in three wins, just like the Lakers. The three win Detroit Pistons arrive at the crypt. They had not won a game away from Detroit all season long. Um, didn't matter that LeBron James wasn't playing in this one on Friday. He sat out another game, warmed up. I guess just wasn't quite ready to go. The Lakers had to have this game, and Anthony Davis delivered 38 points, 16 rebounds, 18 of 21 from the free throw line. Um, you know, we've we've four block shots. We've said it. You know, go be a superstar. Go win a game for your team. He had some help on Friday, but Anthony Davis was a monster against the Pistons. Yeah, after the game, Lonnie Walker said of AD, quote, he's the best player in the league. It's all about bringing it night in, night out. And I don't want to get into a ranking debate about Anthony Davis in terms of his status around the league. I mean, it's clear he has not played well enough on a consistent basis to declare him the best player in the league. But what I believe Lonnie is getting at is talent-wise, if he can put it all together, AD could very well be the best player in the league because there are very few players in the league that can combine all the stuff that he can do on both sides of the ball at that size. Mm -hmm. Like there ain't many other guys in the league like him. And, you know, it, it's part of what makes AD a marvel to watch when he's at his best, but also at times frustrating because you're just like, why, why is that not there? all the time and right. you know to ad's credit and, and they he managed to get basically detroit's entire front court in foul trouble in the first five minutes of everyone game. like the entire yes. team yes he he in the first five minutes of the game uh marvin bagley and uh jalen durlin uh J excuse me jalen duran had two fouls each in the first five minutes of the game, like you had Nerlens Noel checking in, I forgot he was an on. I forgot he was even a piston. But that a I'm lot not sure of that, they knew, to be honest with you, Andy. A you, lot you of not that be the only one. A lot of that was AD just aggressive. I mean, really, the whole team in the first quarter, for all the problems that they had at times in the first quarter, they did a great job attacking the lane. Yeah, I think you know, look. This was a you know Detroit's not a good team, uh, and and they're not a good defensive team. Um, but the Lakers lived at the free throw line, um, and you know throughout the game, Anthony Davis obviously Actually, leading so the Pistons twenty one free throws. Yeah, I mean this is the, the game took seventeen hours to play because there were too many, uh, too many whistles. Um, Between that and the turnovers, yeah, for yeah, we're, we'll get there. Um, but, you know, not only did the Lakers get to the free throw line, they actually made their free throws. They were 35 of 40 from the line. And, you know, they, they were not terrible from three, 35 percent, but they also didn't shoot a lot of them. They only made seven threes. Um, you put up 128 points, only making seven free, uh, seven three pointers. It's because you are very efficient everywhere else. The Lakers shot 55 percent as a team overall, and it means you're also getting the free throw line. Again, 35 of 40 there. Um, you know, to your point about AD, it's like, it's not even the, the straight statistical production, 38 points, 16 rebounds, four blocks. Obviously, you do that every night. Yeah, you're the best player in the league. It's just like you felt him. Like you felt Anthony Davis on, on Friday in ways that you don't always feel, even when he's, 
you know, 26, nine, you know, three assists, a couple block shots, like really respectable high end statistical lines, but not with the same kind of force. Friday, you got the line and you got the force and the Lakers needed it and and they got it throughout the game, you know, from the beginning and then closing. It was Anthony Davis putting the game away. Yeah. I mean, this just. They have needed AD in these moments. Um, you know, they if they're going to try to make a season out of what has been an absolutely brutal start, and LeBron has missed three games in a row. And you know, we talked about this heading into the game. I I did not have any confidence that until LeBron did a full contact mm-hmm. practice that he's going to be on the court. Um, I don't we don't know as of this recording yet if the Lakers are going to practice on Saturday. I'm presuming they won't because they play on Sunday. I wouldn't think so, Uh, yeah. So we'll see. I mean, I know LeBron was warming up. I just – I would be a little bit surprised if he actually did a game without a full contact practice, but we'll see. But either way, like you said, these are the moments where you need AD to step up, and these are the moments where you need other guys to chip in. And it was a weird game in the sense that I thought a lot of guys played very well individually – even though for the for like basically the first three quarters of this game as a team, I thought the Lakers often played pretty badly, but they had a lot of guys chipping in individually. It is a weird dichotomy, but at the end of the day, the, those individual moments eventually consolidated into something that was good as a team, and they won the game. What was what was I think? You know, I, I agree with you. Like a lot of turnovers, uh, Lakers turned the ball over. They had eight only, turnovers in the third quarter. Right. It was, you know, it was it was t- sixteen turnovers for the game. It, but but it felt like more, and they cleaned it up a little bit down the stretch. Um, Zero in the but, fourth quarter. Yeah, and that so th- that accounts for some of it. Um, and you know, they they fell by. They I think they were down by as much as thirteen in the second quarter. Which, by the way climbed out of it and ended up leading at halftime. I forget which, I think it was Sacramento, the game where they were up big and Kings go on a big run at the end of the half. Lakers are winning at the end of the half, but like they kind of gave the game away there where instead of leading by 10 or 11 at halftime, you're leading by three or four. I think it was a Sacramento game. It could have been another one of the 13 times where they've lost this 10 times they've lost this year. But like that was a, you know, a bit of a come to Jesus moment that they needed to have. Um, and they got it, and they got it in part because of the contributions, like you said, from the supporting cast. Um, Wenyan Gabriel was great on Friday, yeah. 15 points, 5 of 5 from the, uh, from the free throw line. He had seven rebounds, but he was a big part of that push in the second quarter. Uh, Thomas Bryant making his season debut, only played 13 minutes, but he had eight points, five rebounds. He was a big part of that second quarter push. He got better as the game went along. He did. I but I mean I I thought but he made an impact early too. Um and so you know those were those were guys who helped lead them. And then in in the in the fourth quarter, you know, Austin Reeves got real saucy. Um he wasn't just you know doing Austin Reeves glue guy stuff. He was like ball faking and you know putting up trick shots and all kinds of stuff and he was a a a, a huge catalyst for the lakers a, a lot of that coming i think while they ad was getting a quick breather um in the fourth and so like that that support was there from for, you know throughout they had six guys in double figures looking at it real quick and then you know bryant had eight and 13 like i mentioned troy brown had eight in 18 minutes so you know production up and down the board and 12 assists from Russell Westbrook. It, it was funny. It, it, Austin that Reeves game, was though. that was Austin Reeves was fantastic in this game. Um mm-hmm. 16 points, six assists, four rebounds, a block. Um, he had the highest plus minus of everybody. And this was a game where the plus minus felt accurate. Oh, because yeah. Because he there were there was a period in this game because, like I said, everybody was so wild that I tweeted out uh, at Cam Brothers that. Austin Reeves has been a responsible adult for the Lakers tonight, and he's way too young to have such behavior thrust upon him because it just seemed like he was the one guy who really was doing his best. Maybe Wenyan Gabriel, because I think he's just wired to be responsible. But like Austin seemed to be the one guy that uh, was wiser than his age. And then in the fourth quarter, the Lakers finally got their bleep together, and I tweeted out, it was like Austin, the responsible adult, told the Lakers, 
I'm going to turn this car around and go home <laughs> a, a, unless everybody, you know, again, gets their bleep together. Plus but, in, in the fourth quarter, he, 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 uh, in, in a play where he was basically thrown in the front row, he, he met some fetching young ladies. Yes, he um, did. So yes, he did. Then they were happy to meet him. Uh, yeah, it was funny so, too, after the game, like the, it ended up with drinks. I mean, really drinks spilled everywhere. It took a while to mop it all up. And uh, Austin said that he asked Le- LeBron during that moment if that was his Lobos over there, the LeBron's tequila, because it smelled horrible. Austin, which made AD mad. AD looked at him. They were on the podium together, and AD looked at him. He's like, I'm an investor. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and Reeves, you know, quick to reply, this doesn't mean it doesn't taste good. We both had the Lobos. It's really good. And it smells good, too. I mean, yes. I, if you, I guess if you don't like the smell of tequila, if you do like the smell of tequila, it smells terrific, and I do like the smell of tequila. <laughs> Me too. It's good tequila. Um, I, you know, it, it's worth talking about. We mentioned, you know, we, we, it was a weird, a weird game for Russ. Where it's like, but actually, in terms of like impact for going forward, because in a lot of games, it was a good game for Westbrook. It was a bad game for Westbrook. High moments, low moments. It was a very typical game in a lot of ways for Russ. Um, but what we saw that was different about. Friday was the addition of Dennis Schroeder, who did not play particularly well. No. Um, not surprising. Sometimes it can be a little harder for guards to to get going when they haven't played in a while. Um, and then Thomas Bryant, who, um, again, only 13 minutes, but a lot of activity. Yeah. Um, moves a lot. It's nice to have somebody else in the front court. He's kind of like a taller Troy Brown. He's always moving, always doing something. Or, or a larger Wenyan Gabriel. Yes. And so we we spent a lot of the week talking about the sort of the optionality and we saw it on Friday where, yeah. you know, you didn't have to play when 40 minutes in this game. Um, you could sit him down for a second. You could sit down Anthony Davis and still keep size on the floor in ways that they haven't been able to do. Cause Detroit's got some big dudes that they can throw out there when they want to. Um, Assuming they're not all in foul trouble. <laughs> true. But it was you could see where Bryant is going to make a difference in the Darvin Ham option tree, even beyond, you know, is he going to play well? How much is he going to play? You could see where it made a difference. Um, Darvin overall treated this game differently than he has a lot of the ones recently where instead of shrinking the, the rotation, he expanded it. Everyone played basically. Yeah, we I mean, we both thought heading into this game, that's the last thing you're gonna see of Kendrick Nunn. None yeah. Did well. Surprisingly, got some minutes. Actually, played. He was part of that big second quarter right. run. Yeah, I mean, there was one point where Darvin had a three guard set. He opened the second quarter with a three guard set of Schroeder, Beverly, and Nunn, uh, with Thomas Bryant out there. So you have three guards who I think have never played together. Plus Thomas Bryant and Schroeder both rusty. I got to admit, I did not see that one coming. No. But and I do think that that is to some degree a little bit it explains a little bit of the raggediness that they had and mm-hmm. some of the disjointedness. Not only are you playing a lot of players, I mean, ten players played in this game, uh, and and Bryant played the fewest amount of minutes at thirteen, so like legitimate playing time for ten players, uh, which is a lot. Um, a lot of them have not played together uh, or played at all <laughs> this season, so. <laughs> Um, anyway, a lot to uh, a lot to like about this game. <laughs> the biggest thing being the Lakers won it. Um, they now my favorite on... part after the game was AD <laughs> noting that uh, we can't get comfortable. Mm-hmm. Good to know that <laughs> despite no, this two game winning streak, AD is aware that the four and ten Lakers can't get comfortable. Nope. And they're looking forward. He, I think he got a little confused too. He thinks the next game is against Indiana. I do hope he gets that straightened out before Sunday. Uh, Lakers taking on the Spurs on Sunday, the first of three games in the next like five days against San Antonio. Um, and it's another one that they need to have. And so we'll see if LeBron plays. Um, he got close on Friday, but did not obviously suit up. But even if he doesn't, another game where um, where the Lakers need to, to, to find a way to win, it'll be a different test for AD to lead them that way because Jakob Pertl, is a very good defensive center for San Antonio. So it'll look different there. Uh, So before we go, though, Andy, some very important things that we need to tell people. Yeah. uh, The first thing is that Locked on Lakers brought to you by Sweat Block, and there's nothing worse than sweat breaking out at the absolute worst time. You're at a wedding or a party, some type of festive event. You want to take off your sport coat, your jacket, get loose, but you can't because you are basically 
leaking in your underarms and it's just gross. So you end up celebrating in a jacket, looking uptight because that's better than looking sweaty and nobody wants to deal with that. Sweat block wipes are your little secret to confidence. The sweat block wipes work for up to seven days per use. Apply them on a Sunday. You will stay dry all week. And if you know someone that is experiencing embarrassing sweat or odor, tell them to try sweat block. Save 20% with the promo code locked on at sweatblock.com, also available on Amazon. Little known fact, this scene in Perfect had to be delayed because Travolta had put on sweat block like three days earlier and they couldn't get the aesthetic that they were looking for. Um, so something to think about. Uh, Locked on Lakers also brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for sports betting, info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer and esports. Got it all on BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, and obviously you do, because this is one, you can find those as well at Bet Online. So uh, it's always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. You head on over to the website today or you use your mobile device to learn more. Uh, it's bet online, and that's where the game starts. All right, we'll see everybody on uh, what, 80 Monday? Yeah, we'll see everybody on Monday.